This video is sponsored by Epic Games, thank you. I have played Alan Wake 2 already and in this video I am going to give you all of my first impressions and also go over all of the game mechanics that you can expect from Alan Wake 2. And if you have been watching my two previous videos you know that I have gotten a mystery on my hands. And today we have received the last pieces of evidence. So far I have received a package full of tools including a flashlight, a blue light, strings, gloves, post-it notes and blue tack, etc. And in the second package, I received two case files regarding two murders. I got a map, some car keys, paper clippings, and we found the conclusion that the key is the key, which I have been thinking a lot about, and I think I figured it out. The two arrows that are pointing in two directions on the key are indicating that I should open the key, maybe. There is a note inside of the keys. So this is like a coded message. Hmm. Some of the clues that we have discovered so far in this case, we discovered a secret bottom of the FBI box. We found a secret letter. Now let's open the last pieces of evidence. A third body has recently been discovered in the area. A man named Percy Wolf. And that is correct. I received a mysterious email a few days ago with a newspaper clipping saying that a man named Percy Wolf was found recently in a dumpster. And this letter is saying, I have also included evidence connecting with Wolf's case, including a menu from the old year diner found on his corpse. A box was found at the scene which is locked with a three digit code. Also included are dictaphone recordings from a local bird watcher who has recently been reported missing. So this is the fourth body, assuming he is also dead. My phone's out of battery and I have just realized I left my power bank charging at the hotel. It's only mid-afternoon, why is it so cold? Leave me alone! Just whatever you want, leave me alone! I found something else out about the key is the key. These newspaper clippings, they contain key ads and I found a circle around three digits. I am assuming that they are the code for this evidence box. A bloody belt. This bloody belt could have been used in some of the murders, I assume. Ah, there's something I should decipher here, I think. This is the most difficult case I've ever worked on. I think maybe you guys need to help me with deciphering this message. I tried, really did. Difficult. Hmm. So here we have the last case file of Percy Wolf. He was found in a dumpster. Organ removal on him as well. I think maybe this Percy Wolf person killed and kidnapped these two. And then we have maybe someone else killing him. I don't know. Maybe I am the murderer. This looks like my car case. Did I do this murder? I have an alibi. I have an alibi. Well, you will never know. So I am guessing that the belt belongs to the first murder. I think the belt was used on his wrists. But I don't understand the rest. <laughs> This has been a fun situation. Whoever designed this riddle was really good. Uh, I am not able to solve this. Maybe some of my viewers are able to solve this. Anyways, I was in Los Angeles because Epic Games invited me and we went to this event to play Alan Wake 2 and I'm gonna let you know everything that I think of the game. Now, starting out with an investigation mission where you play as the all-new co-protagonist Saga Anderson, an FBI agent, a character Alan the writer has written to try and escape from the alternate dimension of which he finds himself trapped in and has been trapped in for the past 13 years. That's the premise of the game. 13 years also being the time passed since the first Alan Wake, so it makes sense, which was released back in 2010 on the Xbox 360, also out on PC, and quite recently actually Alan Wake, the original, was remastered for all platforms. I made a video on that not too long ago here on my channel, if you would like to hear more about what I have to say about the first game. Now, also, they made it pretty clear, and I also wondered about this uh, myself. Do you have to play Alan Wake 1 in order to understand number two? No. 
Alan Wake 2 is made to be very approachable for newcomers. Because of this new character, Saga, the FBI agent, the story and the lore of the world, it's gonna be gradually told to you and you will learn about it as if you are a new person, you know nothing. So they definitely made a point out of that. You don't need to have played the first one in order to enjoy Alan Wake 2, which I was happy to hear. Because I mean, even the people that played Alan Wake 1 13 years ago, <laughs> What if they don't remember anything? <laughs> so it's gonna be easy to jump into. Whew. Hot. The story in short, if you guys remember, is that Alan Wake is a writer who is looking for his wife, picking up manuscript pages, describing upcoming events that he doesn't remember writing, which ends up with Alan being trapped in a horrific alternate dimension. Now, Alan Wake 2 is definitely a survival horror game where you have to piece together the clues that you have come across to unravel the mystery and progress the story. And this sequel is divided into two separate single player storylines. One where you play Saga and the other one where you play Alan Wake trapped in the dimension. Both of these storylines, they can be played in any order. Wake says the story will change reality around us. Now let's talk about my first impressions and let's start out with the graphics and performance. Let's get that out of the way. <laughs> the graphics are as good as it gets. They are incredibly realistic and believable. Their clothes look real. The wind catching the fabric of the clothes. <laughs> It's as good as it gets. The items around in your environment looks real. I mean, look at Saga's cozy sweater. It looks like you can reach out and touch it. The NPCs look realistic. This beer bottle, for example, the trees moving in the wind and the leaves falling, not even to mention the lighting and the realistic shadows. And graphics, I feel like, are very important in a game of this type, where you are supposed to feel very immersed in the story. I mean, you are a detective and you're listening in on people's stories, asking questions, getting clues, and it's so important in a game like this especially, to feel immersed and that the graphics come across as very realistic to you so that you forget that you're playing a game basically, is what I think. And with graphics like these, I can also even feel scared. The game is able to come across also as genuinely scary sometimes. There is a ton of immersive cutscenes that flows straight into the gameplay with no cuts, I noticed. It's like a cutscene of Saga being on the phone and the camera just spins around and I'm in the game. It's not a cutscene, it's like the game, you know, no cuts. I really appreciate that. Facial expressions are good. There's even like a little camera shake. There's wind and there's leaves falling and it's all happening in real time. You know, someone from the team, if I remember correctly, someone said that this game is sort of merging movie format with video game format. It's like a mix of both and I can see what they mean because this is a very story heavy game. Same goes with the first Alan Wake. If you guys ever played that, you will remember. So it's kind of like an interactive movie video game with real actors too. Performance is fluid as butter, if butter is fluid. Smooth as butter. What am I saying? I mean, look at the shadow effects from my flashlight. Just as an example, I think graphics wise, you know, I am standing by that. This is as good as it gets. Let's talk about the gameplay and my impression of the gameplay and what you actually do in the game. Now, the gameplay is chapter based, where the saga gameplay is having a lot of investigation and interrogation, where you have to be smart about what you're hearing and what you're seeing. And it's fun being a detective, you know, trying to pinpoint out where people are lying, getting clues. And you know what? When I figured out something, I felt so smart. 
100 IQ. And at any time, you can enter this mind space, which is like a 3D interactive menu system where you can walk around with your Saga character. And in this 3D interactive menu system, you can look at your case files, you can sort through your stuff and the profiles of the people that you have interrogated, you can upgrade your weapons, and you can also drag and drop and connect your clues that you have gathered up on your case board, the wall. You can listen to the radio and I mean have a look at that cozy sweater. Some of the riddles can be a tiny bit difficult to interpret. There were some places in my PlayStation where I was totally stuck and I had to like help, help please, you know. The people working there they came over and they knew their stuff. They were like go there. They were not trying to help me per se but they were guiding me in the correct direction so then I got the clue and I felt so stupid when I didn't get the clue at first. So definitely, this is a game where you have to be sitting down and being really invested and follow along the story. And it is so rewarding once you just get it. You just have to pay close attention to details and what people are saying and what you're reading. Now the combat is pretty much the same in the Saga missions and in the Alan missions with you using your flashlight like you did in Alan Wake 1 to weaken them before you shoot them, making them vulnerable. Mom's family was from Sweden. I've always imagined it kind of like this. And in the Allen gameplay, you have an upgrade to the clicker this time around. That is a lantern-like device that Allen uses to solve puzzles. And it is able to suck in and shoot out light. Whereas when you activate this device, your environments change. And this makes for a lot of clever puzzles to be had. You can change and manipulate your surroundings this way and open pathways that were previously inaccessible. And sometimes you have to actually look at your environments in order to find the clues that you need in order to progress the story and or find the solutions to your puzzles. Alan also has something much like Saga's mind space where you go into this 3d menu where you can review your information gathered. Now my immediate impression with Alan Wake 2 after playing it for three hours is that I feel like it is very accessible for newcomers I really feel that and it is a horror slash thriller story heavy immersive action adventure game in my words too. I died when I was being uncareful but when I went back to the place where I died I was being a bit more strategic and then it was no problem. Another thing I want to mention is that I know for a fact that this is a game that has been highly anticipated by the fans of the original Alan Wake and it has been such a long time coming and it has been eagerly anticipated for the past 13 years. In my impression this is a worthy sequel of the first Alan Wake. Also, I am very much looking forward to hearing what you think. I want to hear all of your thoughts on Alan Wake 2 down below in the comments section. Also, I want you to check out my link in the description to pre-order your copy of Alan Wake 2 with its full release being on the 27th of October. Uh, make sure you like this video before you leave and if you are new, make sure you're also subscribed. And I hope you will enjoy Alan Wake 2. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later later. So as I was editing the video, I couldn't let this case go. So I've been really trying to solve it. And I think I found something. So I wrote this to the email that was provided. That there are several likenesses between the victims. And I even showed them my notes of my findings. And I got this response. Davis and Lane's case have been reopened thanks to your efforts. Which will be great comfort to their families and loved ones. Justice for them and Piercy Wolf will be served. Congratulations on your excellent detective work, Rookie. But that doesn't really explain everything. <laughs> but it seems like I have solved it somewhat.